Hey everybody, it's Minion Soldier and this is Ship Updates and what an amazing set of ship updates I have for you today. It's Talk Like a Pirate Day and to celebrate Talk Like a Pirate Day, you can purchase either the Super Hornet, the Buccaneer, or the Pirate Gladius if you've unlocked the achievement to purchase the Pirate Gladius, all with six months insurance at relatively the standard prices those ships are available at when they're available. Get yours now. Six months insurance. Yay. <laughs> but, you know, in all seriousness, if you're looking for any one of those ships and you have something cheaper that has LTI, you can, I guess, CCU into them. My advice to you uh, is no. <laughs> <laughs> is absolutely not. I would not purchase any one of these three ships, especially the pirate offerings. Because they are the worst pirate ships you could possibly spend your money on. I mean, they're atrocious. They're horrible. They're terrible. The Tana, the Reliant Tana, the Aegis Avenger are better pirate ships than either one of those two fighters. Even though you could arguably say, oh, but I hear the Gladius is doing great in, you know, in Arena Commander. Oh, I hear that the Buccaneer is very fast and very maneuverable and it's a Drake ship. So clearly they've got to be the better ships. They are absolutely not. In fact, they are not even in the competition. Why? Because what does a pirate do? A pirate steals cargo, and what can neither of those ships do? Haul cargo. They are the worst pirate ships. Do not, don't. If you want to be a pirate, that's the last thing you should be spending your money on. It, it, in fact, it should be the how not to be a pirate gladius and not the pirate gladius. It's literally the antithesis of what you want. So as a pirate or an aspiring pirate, what do you want? So baseline, Aegis Avenger Titan. Why? Why this ship? Because it has cargo capacity and you need cargo capacity to be a pirate if you can't steal anything you're just a marauder so you're not a pirate so it's not a pirate ship right see where i'm going with this so eight scu of cargo capacity that's not that bad that's not that bad as an entry level pirate ship because you might say well eight scu there you know there's nothing you know Titanium isn't worth that much in 8 SCU, but there are things that are going to be more valuable in the Star Citizen universe that someone might be carrying. And maybe if you can disable a heavier but less combat capable ship, you can steal a certain amount of that cargo in or, or exchange it in order to let that person go. So this could be a very profitable ship if well played and used you know, smartly. It's it's not the best cargo ship out there. It's not the best fighter out there, but it's decent. It's good enough and it has within it a bed. It has spaces to store things, items that you're going to need in the universe, because if you're a pirate, you're going to be out and you're going to be on the go all the time. And so having the ability to bring certain things with you wherever you go, maybe a different type of rifle, maybe a different type of armor for a different environment. Maybe you want something light so that you can move quickly or something heavy, heavy because you need to be protected from the environment or bullets, things like that. All these things that you need to think about, being able to bring them along with you for the ride, it opens up possibilities. That is why baseline, this is, this is where piracy starts, the Aegis Avenger Titan. Now moving on, there are some other interesting options down in this sort of area. Well, there's one interesting option. The Reliant Tana is also a ship that I would consider in this car, you know, in this capacity as as a baseline pirate ship. Now, unlike the Avenger, it carries far less cargo. In fact, it only carries one SCU. So for those of you who aren't aware, 
when you go and you look in one of your haulers or you see someone walking into the the you know cargo bay of their haulers and they've bought cargo from uh, a dealer somewhere in space that one large container is one scu but having that cargo capacity there you can still pick up a lot of smaller containers scatter them throughout the ship and still sell that stuff on so it's not the worst for piracy and i mean it's not the worst combat ship in the world either it's not the best but it's certainly not the worst now one of the things that i feel that really kind of puts the tan on this category is this is the first of the the pirate two-man ships there's one person to operate the ship one person to operate ship systems you also have two beds cargo storage capacity though not a lot but you also have armor storage capacity weapon storage capacity and a heck of a lot of space on the floor to throw other random cargo so you can do a fair amount with a ship like this when you're starting out in the star citizen universe and i mean that's the brutal truth is that even though i'm kind of showing you these two ships and you're going but yeah but those don't compete with a buccaneer or with uh you know a gladius in combat or in dogfighting true but as pirate ships they are vastly superior because they allow you to actually be a pirate whereas the other two do not you see what i'm saying now next moving up the list of course is the cutlass black now the cutlass black is a hundred bucks for the ship it is the third most popular ship in star citizen as cig has told us for a reason when you look at the drake cutlass black you might say oh it looks junky or oh you know i heard drake ships are paper thin but not exactly the drake cutlass black can be a bit of a tough customer now you might say automatically what about the freelancer the freelancer is you know is a is a stronger ship in combat in certain respects yes in certain respects no the cutlass black is faster the cutlass black is more maneuverable and guns wise against a baseline freelancer the cutlass black actually sports uh some very interesting firepower because a lot of people forget about the turret because a lot of people use this as a solo ship but on that turret you have two size three guns now the ship comes with size two guns on gimbals that the pilot can control located around the cockpit on the wings and on the shoulders there but those can be removed the gimbals can be removed and replaced with four more size three guns for a total of six size three guns is it better than most of the dogfighting fighters in the star citizen universe no but if you can slave that turret which is a possibility or you have somebody whether it's an npc or a player operating that turret for certain ships in the star citizen universe that could be a very frightening amount of firepower especially on something that's this fast and this nimble comparatively speaking so it opens up a lot of doors for you and its cargo capacity is 46 scu so it carries an absolute crap ton of cargo so maybe you don't want to pirate today maybe you just want to smuggle it opens up so many more doors this really is in my opinion if you want to be a pirate in the star citizen universe and you want to have a decent start in the game this is where you start looking this is the best option to start in and truth be told it is relatively a similar price within ten dollars of both of the ships that cig is trying to sell you as pirate ships that aren't actually pirate ships it may not be as nimble it may not be as flashy but it's popular within the game for a reason people love this ship for a reason it's not because it's gorgeous it's because it works it's not it doesn't excel at any job but it does every job good enough now moving on up from there we have the freelancer now the freelancer i would say is a fair bet at a next step up from the cutlass 
Now the base freelancer is only $10 more than a Cutlass. And I would argue out of the two ships, I would rather have a Cutlass, even though this carries far more cargo. So if you're more into the smuggling type of things, the freelancer might pay off a lot more, a lot, well, a lot more quickly. But overall, day in and day out, as a keeper, I think the Cutlass is better the, than the baseline freelancer. However, stepping up to the freelancer miss, which I believe when it's available and of course the anniversary sale is coming up and it that will obviously be available then that runs about 175 dollars and while that has four less scu than the cutlass at i think 36 if i remember correctly it boasts a dizzying array of missiles now that ammunition of course comes with a cost you have to replenish missiles but it is potentially a much more frightening opponent than a Cutlass. So while the baseline Freelancer, I would argue, personally, I don't think is that much of a step up. The Freelancer Miss is definitely a step up from the Cutlass. Even though it has less cargo capacity, it definitely has the firepower to stop someone in their tracks. Or it just may be the fact that it's so ugly. Now, the beauty of the ships that I have shown you so far is that they are all currently available in Star Citizen right now. You buy it, you can fly it the same day, as long as you have the game downloaded. But going into the future, there is a good ship looming on the horizon that is just waiting for CIG to wake up to the fact that it should already be in production now course we're talking about the drake corsair now arguably the drake corsair fills the slot that the caterpillar was originally supposed to take as the raid commander as the pirate raid commander this features more cargo capacity than any of the freelancers or i believe most of the freelancers except maybe the freelancer max but then again i think it's very very close but it sports a dizzying amount of firepower not only does it carry an, a wide assortment of missiles but it also has the potential to upgrade to four fixed size five guns and two fixed size threes or two sorry two fixed size fours correction that is a dizzying amount of firepower. Now, some people don't like it. And they say, oh, I don't like the fact that some of the, the missiles are attached to the wings or one of the guns is attached to the wings. And I don't like that. You know, if that wing gets blown off, then you lose it. True. But I think that as we've been moving up through these ships, we've kind of gone from the one man operation to ships that operate better as a group. And I think that as you kind of move up through these ships, your tactics and yourself as a player are going to evolve along with potentially the players that play with you. Now, the Corsair is listed as one to four crew. And truth be told, I would say that at least two or three crew members would be a wise thing to bring along. Though... I mean, an argument could be made that you could do certainly a lot of damage solo going out, blowing up ships, and then going out and retrieving their cargo and taking it wherever you want. Certainly possible. But this, I would say, is the ceiling of what is possible as a solo player. In fact, I would not even say that it's really possible as a solo player unless you're hiring NPCs to man certain, certain turret stations to kind of cover your six and your sides. I think... If you're going out that way as a player, then yes, solo quite potentially, but better as a group. And certainly three or four of these things working together as kind of like a wolf pack, you can see how very devastating that would be. And so I think that this is kind of where you, you effectively cross a line in my book where solo play is just is traveling from unlikely or difficult into impractical to near impossible with a ship like this this is kind of where i would call 
the dividing line with this being on the just possible side. So if you're looking for a decent pirate ship to get into as a player, as you know, your starter pirate ship, here are a selection of ships that I've given you. Some of which that are available, some of which aren't, but all of which represent at the maximum a ship that a single player can fly and something that you can enjoy, something that has a lot of legs and something that opens up a lot of doors for you in the persisting universe. Remember, being a pirate isn't just about wearing pirate colors or having a ship that says pirate down the side. It's about having a ship that you can actually pirate with. Hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you for watching. So, 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 so if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in the Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow us, please follow us, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.